Hello and welcome back. And that is right, today we want to return to the subject of this. This is the GMK Tech G9 Nook Box. This is their first flash NAS system. We did a review on this a little while ago and for the most part, we really liked it. Temperatures were something to be discussed, something we'll touch on later on, but ultimately a lot of users got in touch about this. And although there are people that were looking at this for a little tiny little Proxmox server, running a few containers out there or just running it as a mapped drive, an overwhelming number of you were wondering about this device for media. Ultimately, if you've got a large collection of decades of media and you're thinking about building your very own Netflix from the comfort of your own home, is this something worth considering? And that's what today's video is about. We're gonna be exploring this device's capability as a media server. But before we go any further, let's discuss the sponsor of today's video, AliExpress. There's every chance you're going to be looking at AliExpress right now in order to get hold of it. And right now they are doing their summer sale where you can enjoy up to 80% off on a multitude of their products as well as utilizing the mobile application for their shake and win promotion right now to get even more freebies. These promotions alongside up to 50 pounds off your order using the codes on screen are gonna be available until midnight June the 28th. Alongside this, you can still jump on board my own AliExpress cashback team in order to enjoy 5% cashback on your orders and go up to a potential 10% cashback or 450 50 pounds by orders that are placed through the AliExpress application by joining my team. Do take advantage of some of the codes you've seen on screen and linked in the description below in order to get started and save yourself a little bit of bunts. M.2 NVMEs. These have become increasingly affordable. In fact, if you look around online right now, you can pick up drives like this for 4TB for as little as $200. That sounds like a lot, but when you look at four terabytes of hard drive are around $89 to $99, suddenly these drives aren't so inaccessible anymore. And with multimedia, particularly high-end audio as well, but also 4K and 8K media getting especially dense, the performance benefits of SSDs have actually started to grow a lot more in the world of multimedia, particularly those that are being shared for multiple family members anywhere around the world. Any bit of latency saving, any bit of high performance overhead being moved away from the server and onto the media is only a good thing. Which brings us back to the G9. The G9 with its Twin Lake CPU, the M150 inside there, it's a quad core CPU designed to have a very low base frequency that can be clocked up pretty substantially. And with four M.2 NVMe, NVMe bays inside, that's a huge amount of storage potential. Four 4TB M.2 NVMe's, even with one driver failover in something like a RAID Z or a RAID 5, is still going to give you 12 terabytes of potential capacity there, which adds up to a lot in terms of TV shows and your multimedia. And we're talking about your Avenger flicks that never seem to end. Just don't forget that at this scale, you are going to need to make sure these have these heat sinks. They cost practically nothing. And just make sure every one of your SSDs has a heat sink on board. So the fan inside this can actually get the job done a little better. And particularly if you're looking at 8K and multiple 8K users at once, get heat sinks on those drives. But also the simple fact that a system like this has such a low power consumption thanks to a low TDP CPU, low power consuming M.2 NVMEs and 2.5 gigabit ethernet networks effectively costing the same power as standard gigabit ethernet, it's now become apparent that you don't need to spend thousands of dollars on the base server to get the best multimedia for your needs. This on the other hand actually has an extra little bonus inside, but for that let's flick over to the screen. Now a big chunk of today's video is going to be here on the desktop of this PC as I show you multimedia output taking advantage of that GMK Tech at G9. Now the third, first thing you've really got to keep in mind is that 64 gig EMMC there. This means that you're going to have somewhere on the device to install your operating system without having to worry too much about losing out on some of that SSD storage. Because let's face it, if you're going to go out of your way to buy yourself a brand new NAS device and you've already spent a decent little bit of money, you want to know that your SSDs are going to go straight on that multimedia storage. This isn't like when you're looking at a mini PC that may have one or two different M.2 NVMe slots like this one. This is the GMK Tech MC. 
6 Mini. This is quite a powerful little system, and graphically, it's going to be absolutely banger when it comes to things like transcoding, 4K and 8K, but it only has two M.2 NVMEs, and one of those is going to have to be for the operating system. This is why a lot of users looking at mini PCs for a NAS or at least in multimedia NAS, end up going for things like this. And now with the growing affordability of M.2s with 4TB M.2 NVMEs as low as $200, and particularly that crucial P3 that we talked about hitting that wonderful little sweet spot price-wise, I think devices like this one that arrive with an extra bit of storage for your operating system are going to be hugely appealing. Because even if you're only using this device to access media, the operating system is going to be crucial. You may have heard about things like True NAS, which, although tremendously powerful, are really going to push the limits of what that N150 CPU can do, as well as being quite a hefty operating system with a huge complexity behind it. It's going to have an impact. Alternatively, things like Unraid, which is far more lightweight that can run from a USB stick loading it into the memory, and therefore, maybe you're not going to have to worry too much about that area of storage nonetheless has an element of complexity behind it and does require you to you take advantage of a license in order to run your multimedia server at least after 30 days out of the trial that's why for this video i'm going to be utilizing zimmer os or casa os for the more lightweight version it is completely free it's also lightweight enough that you can run this from that area of emmc storage and not have to lose out on any ssds this means that in the case of this device for example that i've populated with multiple m.2 nvmes and here we have our uh, crucial p3 in one of our slots it allows us to not lose out on any storage for our larger more upscaled multimedia and still run a very lightweight multimedia server as well as much much fast and easy deployment of multimedia applications so for example this video we're taking advantage of plex of which there are multiple versions alternatively you might want to take advantage of jellyfin you might want to take advantage of that with multiple apps and services perhaps you want to use mb perhaps you want to use twonky Oh, mind you, Tonky might not even be there anymore. Alternatively, you could use Rune. There are loads and loads of containerized applications and multimedia, and all you've got to do is go ahead into the categories and find the right one for you. There are absolutely tons of containerized applications running within Zimmer OS and Casa OS to make a lightweight multimedia server running on your G9. So that's enough about the hows and wares. What about the actual performance? As you can see here, I have got that G9 with Jellyfin installed and Plex Media Server. Now, we are going to be accessing this on a web browser while I am running OBS here in the background, so do keep that in mind. Most users are going to be accessing their multimedia server remotely or on the local area network using a smart device or at least a DLNA or UPnP device there. So, for example, and again, I'm not going to play any um, well-known media, things like you know a movie like this because if i play this the youtube algorithm can be a real pain and, and copyright strikes and community strikes and more are difficult and complicated to get around it can ultimately result in a video being defunded but nonetheless things like plex which do require um, a paid license to make the most of which now is 249 dollars do allow you to scrape a lot of media online and make a very convenient remotely accessible multimedia platform alternatively the slightly more complicated, and I really do mean slightly, uh, platform Jellyfin with multimedia applications, client applications and more, has no licensing backend to worry about there. And it is completely free, and although it does have a little bit more work there on the dashboard, it's very easy to set up. And once you've done that, you can access your media either on the local area network or remotely quite conveniently. So if we look at this, for example, if we look at our catalog here of test files in 1080p, and 4K. Let's go for something a bit more hefty. We look at something like a 30 megabits per second HEVC file. We play this here in the web browser and we're playing that original file. Now, again, when you're talking about multimedia, whether you're looking at a budget NAS to turn into your very own private Netflix with your decades of media, keep in mind that the multimedia format you choose to use makes a difference. I'm accessing this on the local area network and therefore this media is very straightforward and I can play the original format. But 
It might reach a point when I'm playing down the line, especially dense multimedia like these ones at the bottom here, which really add up. Now, heading back into that layout of the NAS, if I go into the files and look into the SSD, this is that media on that crucial drive, and I look into these multimedia files, these are all the same 30 second file. But look at the weight. This file here is 11.2 megabytes. However, accessing that there, at the bottom here, 1.5 gigabytes. That is the same 30 seconds, but it's gone from just 10 megabytes to 1.5 gig. And a big part of that is to do with the bit rate. That is the MBPS. Ultimately, the amount of data per second being displayed and the resolution of this 4K file. 10 bit HDR, ultimately, all of this adds up to an enormously uh, dense file. Then we've got to talk about things like HEVC, Highly Efficient Video Codec. This is a um, paid for license which some client devices will support, however not all. And in some cases it forces your server, in this case the GMK Tech G9, to do the conversion. So put that into perspective, if I play this file in the web browser, there is the original file. It's having difficulty paying, playing this very dense file. Now, though I've got the license, I'm on a restricted network. I've actually got a very complicated network here in the office. So what I might want to do is convert this file into something more manageable. As you can see there, I can convert it down to 2 megabits per second there. But it's still timing out. And a big problem with that is to do with hardware transcoding or to do with software and hardware transcoding. So, for example, here on this server, we can go in and manage the server but because this isn't a Plex Pass account, when I go into the transcoding engine and I try to make my CPU hurt, I'm not able to take advantage of the hardware transcoding. This is what I mean about Plex and Jellyfin there. So if you already have a Plex Pass, you'll be able to convert that file. And nonetheless, if you do use the Plex application, the Plex application running on a client device, if you have a device that supports a higher dense media, has a higher dense network bandwidth connection, and or support HEVC with licensing in the first place, you won't need to worry about transcoding there on your G9 or any multimedia NAS device there. Now, coming out of that, we can look into, let's go back into our file here and go back onto that device. We can look at Jellyfin. Now, Jellyfin allows a huge amount of access right out the gate. It has none of the licensing problems we've talked about. So to put it into perspective, if I try and play some of these dense files here and we bring it here into the web browser, we can see it plays that file. In fact, we can get the playback info. As you can see, all of that real-time information about how the file is being played, what hardware resources are being used, are all readily available to us there. But moreover, the GMK Tech G9 is powerful enough that it can support 8K media. Now, 8K media, when I'm going to try to play this back here using OBS on a Windows PC, you're going to see a lot of hardware resource utilization here. And it, we're already at quite a decent amount of uh, resources right now. So if you're going to see glitches and playback issues, do not be surprised if that's to do with me trying to play an 8K file like this in the web browser. But keep in mind, I'm now watching an 8K file, 8K, on an Intel N1. 5.0 system. So if we bring up that NAS there, bring that up and maybe minimize that on the screen, we can see our utilization isn't too bad. We can see our system resources there. We're not hammering the system too hard here when we're accessing this file over 8K on the local area network. That N15 CPU, very low TDP indeed, is able to play back that 8K file like an absolute charm. But it doesn't stop there. While it's playing that 8K file, why don't we push it a little bit harder. Why don't we play two instances of 8K? So now I'm playing 8K in Plex Media Server and I'm playing an 8K file there on Jellyfin side by side. No transcoding. CPU at just 10% there, dipping down to 5 as soon as the localized buffering takes place there. But does it stop? Let's not stop. Now we're going to play a 100 megabits per second file here, the original HEVC. And at this point, now the only limitation really is my network bandwidth and the PC I'm trying to do 
Like right now, yes, this file on the right isn't playing, but no doubt we can see system resources getting absolutely hammered and OBS, although keeping up, is struggling. But it's the NAS that's doing fine here. Still not enough to convince you? How about this? Right now I am playing, as you can see on screen, five 8K files. There is no transcoding. Yes, if there was transcoding, we would of course have to talk about CPU changeover and just how much of the system resources would be going to convert those files on the fly. But if you aren't someone that's interested in transcoding and you intend to access these devices on the LAN, right now we've got Plex playing that 8K file. On the top left we have an 8K file. Yes, these are being minimized here in the screen, but as you can see it's still the original resolution there, a 7000. On the bottom left we have another one here. In fact, right now the real pain I'm having is getting this thing to stay on board while I'm doing all of my testing. But right now, as you can see, We've got multiple 8K instances all coming from the same server, from the same containerized application running from that server. In fact, right now, if we go into Plex, we can use the Plex backend to find out a little bit more information about the CPU resources being used there in the background. There's only the one coming from Plex, but CPU utilization is still pretty darn good. And for me, that's the big takeaway here. And that's the big takeaway here. When it comes to little M150 CPU NAS devices and the more affordability of M.2 NVMEs right now in 2025, systems like this one are becoming incredibly desirable, not just for 4K, but now 8K playback. Now, we've done detailed uh, breakdowns of Plex Multimedia playback on different CPUs, and the M150 is a CPU we're seeing getting explored a lot more. But right now, if you are considering a NAS device for multimedia and you're looking for low power consumption, this device is something to keep an eye on. Remember, you can install the operating system on that EMC with no extra SSDs being lost. You can take advantage of affordable 4TB SSDs to store with four bays in a RAID 5 configuration. Nevertheless, 12 terabytes easily for just $600 for those four SSDs and still have one failover and with a low TDP and handling of up to 8K, this thing is damn impressive. But don't just take my word for it. Check out other reviews online. I'll link to a few below as well as my own review of this device and other reviews we've done. Do take advantage of the links in the description to get hold of devices that we talked about today via the links below if you plan on shopping at those stores and you found this video useful. It really helps us out here on the channel to keep doing what we do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.